Hey guys, it's Aaron here in the uh, the retro workshop. 16-bit workshop? What did I call it now? Hmm. It's not really any of those things today. Um, I don't usually do this kind of thing. I don't really usually do anything, to be honest, at the moment. But um, I picked up one of these uh, Yihua branded um, hot air and soldering stations. This is an 853D because I need to do some rework on the Amiga 1500. And I'd already got, or rather I picked up recently, uh, let me just swing the camera around so you can see it, uh, ZD915, probably knockoff, desoldering station, that works really well though, um, way better than the cheap, uh, not ZD915 that I bought previously. But I needed something that had, a, you know, a decent iron and, um, ideally a hot air gun, well, these things so that I could uh, desolder surface mount stuff. I've been playing around with an old uh, little old router board here, uh, taking all the caps out. And <clears throat> I had a few failures when I was using the previous desoldering station, which couldn't suck uh, anything off of anything. Uh, the new one works really well though. Anyway, I thought, I don't usually open these things, but I've read so many horror stories on the internet about these things uh, catching fire and all sorts of things um, that I would take at least a cursory glance. I am not an expert. Apparently one of the failure modes is that the heater element in the hot air gun on some of these was solely switched by a triac on the controller board down here. Um, and that regardless of what you did with the switches on the front, uh, which one's for the hot air, this guy, um, everything was still actually switched by the triac, so you could never really turn it off off. So I am pleased to see, I, don't know, I haven't traced this wiring to see where this clearly low voltage side switch goes, um, but I noticed this had a switch, like a physical rocker switch, on the back. And I thought I'd see if this was actually hooked up to anything. And much to my surprise and delight, it is. Um, mains voltage comes in the socket at the bottom. This has a built-in fuse holder, so the the, the primary side um, mains hot is fused, which both live and neutral, you know, hot and whatever people call the one that isn't hot when they use that term. Um, they're both red for, you know, I guess it, it's AC, so it doesn't really matter. Travel up here to the switch. Both sides, live and neutral, are switched, so it doesn't really matter which way around they have this. Both sides are fused, then switched, then go off down here to uh, the main board down here, and then obviously back out through this sizable transformer that is 220-240 volt rated um, and outputs 20 volts and 10 volts and 0 volts so yeah I mean the build quality is is decent I would say um, so, you know this case appears to be grounded there's another ground up here um, I haven't actually built those out I don't have my meter up here, but uh, I might bell those out and see. But yeah, actually, this, assuming it works when I uh, power it on, this Yihua, Yihua branded 853D seems to be reasonably well constructed. So I might just uh, slap the case back on and turn it on and see if it works. Anyway. This might be a five minute video or maybe I'll give you some footage of me melting some stuff, but uh, yeah, actually quite impressed so far.
Okay, so a little reposition, and I will try not to knock the uh, tripod with my leg, but um, I mean it's on, it seems to be working. There's not a great deal of surface mount stuff on this board that, um, well there are, there's a whole bunch of chips, but <clears throat> that I'm confident in my abilities to try and desolder, so, eh, let's start with this guy over here maybe that I think might be, uh, if you can see that, might be an inductor. I should also say I don't have a pair of pliers up here, so I have to use these uh, chip pullers. But you know, we work with what we got, All right? Crank it up a bit. I do like the digital temperature controls, that's, that's really cool. Maybe an inductor was a bad choice for my first on-camera attempt. So let's try one of these teeny tiny capacitors over here. I don't even know if I'm in shot. Yeah, I am. Sorry, I know I just hit the tripod. Yeah, look at that. I desoldered the world's smallest uh, capacitor, which I just dropped. <laughs> that works. It's going to need a little practice, but it works. Congratulations, you just saw my, my first time. Um, so the fan carries on for a bit to cool the hot end down. Now, where did I put that? Uh, Yeah, a little capacitor. Really need some tweezers. Do not have any tweezers to hand, so. Uh... Oops. Picking the damn thing up is uh, tricky. Now I know that it should be basically possible to put this back by flowing some fresh solder onto the pads and then giving it a little tap. So I'm just going to add some flux paste. Ah, oh, you get it to come out. Like that. Rubber chunker 6040. Way better than, you know. Lead free stuff. 
and try and put some fresh solder onto the pads and then I'll try and put the component back on and you can't see crap because of my hands, can you? Sorry about that. Two big balls of solder. And then where'd I put it? There it is. We have to manipulate this guy back to where he lives. And try and hold him in place. Or I solder him back. I chose the tiniest, tiniest component, didn't I? Kind of dumb. Hey, look, I made a tombstone. My big old ham fisty hands here are struggling with this. Maybe my first time would have been better with not something that's like three millimeters long and, and you know, you can't even see. But let's persevere. And you guys can watch me fail hard. Well, I would go with it's not pretty, but it's in. But you know, it's a good job I'm not making production boards, because uh, you see that whole mess right there? It's all sticking up like a sticky uppy thing. Anyway, uh, more practice required, which I will do off camera, because it's going to be really tedious for you guys. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. The um, the Yihua, let me just turn you around a tad, um, also has, which I think is quite nice, a uh, power supply, a bench power supply. Having looked inside, you know, that's not going to set the world on fire, right? But, hey, it's got... Variable voltage power supply. It's not constant current, but... Yeah, you know. It's got a USB out because uh, when don't you want to charge your phone while you're doing this stuff? And most importantly, I think, a power switch on the back that turns everything off. So, cool. Well, you just saw me desolder my first SMD component ever and attempt to miserably resolder one back on and I think that'll do for now. Um, as I mentioned, I have an Amiga 1500 which you haven't seen yet uh, that I picked up off a friend of mine. Um, it has the usual battery damage that needs fixing. Um, so, well, I think I threw the evil Vata away but basically, you know, that's the next project which is what all of this stuff was bought for. All of this guy this guy and uh, let's see these guys that came packaged in a very interesting way but these are if you can see it Motorola 68010's apparently uh, who knows if they're real or not uh, we have in this packet this packet here I won't take it out a diagram um, John Hurtle's creation and, because you can probably
probably guess what the uh, Vata killed, if you know anything about Amigas. Three new sockets for the 68,000. I bought three because I am ham-fisted, as you just saw, and I don't know how many I might kill. Plus, you never know when I might need to re-socket something else, so why not? Anyway, that's a project for another day, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.